I want to turn my mic on. Hello, hello, hello. 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 Y'all can sit right over here in the middle if you want to. It won't, it won't come over. Right there where they're sitting, you can't see them. All right. Yeah, I can see you that way. Because I'm only going to talk to you while I'm talking. I'm a little loud just for the four of us. Oh, that's right. You told me that last week. Because I asked him to come sit over here. <laughs> I want to be able to see everybody. Whoa. Nobody's left, that's right. Yeah. How's the new job? Good. Good? Well, good evening. Welcome, everybody. Good to have the folks that are here with us. The middle, yeah, you go ahead and talk. You keep talking, that's fine, Roy. For those that are watching online, that would be Roy Holbrooks. Um, be praying, praying for him tonight. And <laughs> no, I, if you're watching online, thank you. For those that are here, thank you. Um, it's a unique time. Um, you know, had a lot of conversations with some of our folks this week, and um, there's just fear. There's just fear, and um, it's very real. Um, I think everybody's feeling it to a certain extent. And um, so we're going to talk about some of that tonight, actually, from God's Word. And um, but I just want to say, if you are watching online, thank you. Um, we were blessed this past Sunday with a large uh, folks uh, viewing online, and you are just as much part as this service tonight as anything. And for those of you who are here, thank you for being here. And uh, we've got some of our teenagers in the back, and uh, and our kids. Um, talking to Miss Crystal, just wanted to kind of give it a little bit, a few more weeks um, for that. So um, they'll hopefully be meeting again. But uh, let's just open up in a word of prayer, and then we're going to share some prayer needs and then get into God's Word. Father, I just want to say thank you for the privilege to gather here in this place on Wednesday night. I thank you for those that are here in the room. Um, I'm very grateful for them, and I know there's so much going on. And there is the, um, the real emotion of fear right now. We acknowledge that. We, we um, don't want to walk away from it. We want to, um, Lord, bring it to you even tonight of any of those things that's in our heart and help us. As a church family, as we walk through knowing that we have um, experienced um, a large number that, that did get sick uh, uh, several weeks ago and still walking through that, some are, and and it weighs heavy on all of our hearts and then family members and, and folks within our church that have lost loved ones in recent days. And with all that, God, we lay before you. But we are grateful that we can pray and grateful that we can gather like this, both in person and online. I just want to say thank you for everyone that's watching and everyone that's in this room. God, thank you for them. Bless our time together as we gather around your word and as we pray together. And we give you praise for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, again, it's good to see everybody here tonight. So grateful that you're here. Thank you for watching online. Um, you know, here's what's um, in the midst of this ministry still taking place. Um, last night was able to go and give gift cards to the Hero Ministry uh, here in White County. What a tremendous ministry that is, uh, White County Heroes. They do uh, golf in the fall, and so uh, we, we sponsored last night's event. So ministry taking place there. Friday night we'll be able to take food to the Victory Home. We'll be going, but we'll be sending food. Um, today was able, really as a representative of you, the church, uh, took some lunches to some of our folks today, um, families that um, have been sick and, and getting better, but just kind of dropped some Chick-fil-A as a representative um, 
for, for the church. And um, so that's ministry taking place right now in uh, Louisiana. There is the disaster relief teams. I reposted something from Facebook. Uh, I think they had on there over 150,000 meals sent out already. Um, and that comes because our church, like other churches, give. And they're able to provide meals right there in the in the hardest hit areas. Uh, now they'll be going in there with teams to do mud outs and clean up. And so um, that's ministry right there. Um, but not to mention when you reach out and you encourage and you, you know, just acts of kindness right now. Um, we were talking about it in our discipleship group. Everybody's on edge. Everybody's tired. Everybody's fatigued. Everybody's walking through things. Um, our favorite place we do our discipleship group, we're not sure what happened, but they were closed. We don't know if it was a shortage of help. We just showed up, and they were not there, so we had to go to Dairy Spot, which is still not bad, but um, I just know they've been dealing with, with staffing issues. I know that. Um, and so it's in the midst of everybody just getting hit in different ways. But hey, God's still at work in so many ways and encouraging our hearts. And so i um, grateful that you're here. I do want to mention, I was talking to Sheila, and I've been praying about this. And um, just another way to minister to where our folks are at um, with the fear and with the, the not being able to space out right now, which I know that's something that's on everybody's mind. We have the, the radio receiver. So in the 1030 service, um, at least for a little while, we're going to put that out there. Folks can still come, park, be a part of it, hear the service, be a part of that. Um, may, maybe eventually, you know, do some um, 830 services. But right now, that's something where I don't, I haven't preached twice on a Sunday since I got sick. So I need to kind of build back to that. Good. We're good. Thank you. Sheila said she's good. Um, but that's something we can do, just an option for people. Because I really want to seek to minister to folks where, where they're at and, and in this season. And, um, and I'll say this again uh, for everybody here and you're watching online. Um, this church has been so encouraging. And that's the truth. Um, and, and people still continue to give. Um, people still continue to find ways to serve and to encourage and certainly have encouraged this pastor. And uh, that is the truth. Uh, we're going to dig into God's Word, and then we're going to come back at the end and look at our prayer list. And if you've got, many of you have already online have sent me prayer needs in this room. If you've got prayer needs, we certainly want to continue to remember Caitlin and her family, um, and also Brother um, David Martin, at, um, and then also Delphia, and then Michelle. We know her as Barbary, Michelle Thornton, but, you know, for Barbary, for us, for a long time, and uh, her husband passing away, and... Um, just been praying for her, talking to her, and, and trying to encourage her, and and um, so many others. But when we think about these things, I want you to take your Bibles, a very familiar passage of Scripture, Psalms 23. And and I know um, you say, wow, that's, preacher, come on, you know, you could come up with something more. But in my heart, this, this came to my heart actually um, last week, and I actually wrestled whether to preach this or what I preached on Sunday but I really kind of got peace about what I was supposed to preach and, and did Sunday. But in my quiet time, just in, in praying, the Lord kind of showed me some things about verse 5 and talking about coming out of the valley of the shadow of death. The term, the dark night of the soul, um, that was coined a phrase from a Catholic monk um, who had wrote a poem, if you will, about his personal journey of, of walking through what he termed the darkness of the night to bring it to a place of clarity, to finding union with God. But it came out of a spiritual crisis. That term's been used multiple times through the years to speak of, of difficulties, trials, tribulations, um, speaking of the darkness speaks of the trial that might be happening. Um, the, the soul speaks of the inward part. Um, I think we're all dealing with fatigue in many ways, but there is something about that's very true about the fatigue of the soul, that inward part of us 
that that hurts that inward part of us that can get overwhelmed um, when I think about the dark night of the soul um, the question arises well, what about Christians can we experience those moments of soul fatigue those moments where we have a spiritual crisis and we might even question and wrestle with the things of faith um, I, I, just to be transparent um, last Tuesday um, when I got one of the texts from Caitlin it came through about 1.30 that morning there had been a, a drastic change in Dalton and I could not go back to sleep and uh, gotten up early and just begin to my own heart begin to have some questions begin to say oh, Lord I, I, I trust your sovereignty I know that you are in control but as a human being even as a Christian there's that dichotomy that I'm still flesh I'm still in my human body in my human mind my heart knows the truth but my mind can get weary with the facts that I see in front of me and wondering here's a 27 year old that at this point you know was still fighting married less than nine months and here's Caitlin having to walk through this that no wife should ever have to walk through much less only nine months married so those questions begin to arise um, you think about through the, the Bible uh, the people that walk through what could be termed the dark night of the soul David we're going to read the psalmist here definitely had moments like that all throughout the psalm he's asking the question God where are you Lord you know where, what's are you forsaking me um, we know that Moses cried out to die we know Elijah did as well. Uh, Jonah in rebellion just said, just take, take my life. Um, there were moments we know Job, even though Job never walked away, um, he dealt with the, the night of the soul of everything that he had lost. But one thing that always intrigued me about Joel is, or Job, Job didn't have Job to read. <laughs> he couldn't read the last chapter and go, okay, good, it's going to end up okay. No, he, and he also didn't have chapter 1 and 2 that said, Oh, God had a conversation with Satan, and that's why I'm in the mess I'm in. He didn't have that. I mean, we don't, we're not privy to everything that's said and done in heaven. But God is working in the midst of it. Here's the thing that I want to bring out to everybody online and us here tonight. We've got to come to a place in the Christian journey where we give room and space for questions, sometimes for doubts, we got to give some room and space for the wrestling at times of what in the world is going on right now. Even John the Baptist, I read about him again today. The man that saw the very Son of God, baptized him, called out and said, he's the one, the Son of the living God, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. John proclaimed that, baptized him, saw the dove come down, heard the voice from God, but he got thrown into prison. He was isolated. If you want to put it this way, his second cousin basically took away his ministry. <laughs> it's never recorded that Jesus ever visited him in prison. Never recorded. Whether or not he did, we don't know. Never recorded. In prison for standing for truth. At a moment, his disciple goes, Hey! Jesus is out there doing some stuff again. He's healing. He's doing. And John had preached a message of repentance, of judgment. And John was like, wait a minute. You're healing people. Where's the judgment supposed to come? What about taking Rome down? So not only was he isolated, in prison, left alone, but his thinking of what Christ was going to do hasn't happened. So he asked the question. Go ask him. Are you the one or should we look for another? This was John the Baptist. But Jesus tenderly, just like as a shepherd, didn't condemn him. He said, you have taken back to God's word. And he began to quote Isaiah of the points that led to know that he was the Messiah. All that leads me to, to verse 5. Verse 4, actually the first three verses, man, what a blessing. You're seeing, he's my shepherd. He's led me beside the still waters. He's restored my soul. Man, he, he, I shall not want. He, he's laid me down in green pastures. 
then all of a sudden, boom, a turn takes. Now I'm walking through the valley of the shadow of death. And commentators disagree back and forth. Is he speaking of actual death or is he speaking of the shadow in the sense of it's not death but the things that come from death? Either way, it's a dark moment. Um, I think for us as a church body, Sunday morning to get three phone calls from three different families of a lost loved one that had passed, that's a lot for any church, but for our size church, that's a lot. And so you're, we're, we're facing death. And some in our church are facing it literally when it's their spouse or it's their sister or it's their, somebody in their family, but it affects us all. I think for all of us, it kind of took on the burden with Caitlin. Even though we were not able to be there, we, we carried that burden because it became very real to us. Um, so that, that, that weighs heavy on you. And then if you've got other people that you know that are passing or have passed or, or sick, and then not just to mention the COVID issue, but life doesn't stop either. So there's still the pressures of life, jobs, stuff, whatever you're walking through, there's still all of that. Here's what I think can happen. In, a, in, in my mind, for our church, when we had all those people get sick and then life continued to happen as well, it was like the year's worth of pandemic got squeezed into a month. You know, and, and you're feeling the, the weight of that. And so there comes that moment when you begin to wrestle, God, what are you doing? What are you up to? What does this look like? What are you doing in my life? What are you doing in the life of our church? I've asked that question a lot. I actually shared with a, a pastor from West Virginia, John Smith, and I said, John, am I, if, if I somewhere like David have done something to where the plague of God, <laughs> I mean, really, I said, do I need to go make, I mean, I, I was being very serious. I was like, Lord, I have prayed a lot. Lord, search me. if there's, Because when you see our people um, and you hear in their voice, Things you've never heard before in 17 years. It weighs on you. But your family's the same way. Your heart's the same way. We all deal with it differently. Different levels of emotional stability and what we think about. But the psalmist says, I, I've walked through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Now, now wait a minute. I will fear no evil. That, that sounds good, David. But how, how does that work? How does that flesh out? Because fear's real. I think we have to acknowledge and give room and space to say there's a level of fear all of us are walking through and it doesn't mean that we stay there but we at least acknowledge it so that we can come to grips with what the next thing says for thou art with me. The same shepherd that takes us to the green pastures is the same shepherd that walks us through the dark valley. The same shepherd that leads us to that stream. I mean, you know, man is always posting pictures of, of great nature and I love it because I love streams I love I mean I live near a stream my whole life I still love running water there's just something about that just like oh. but it ain't felt like running water a whole lot lately has it the same shepherd that walks us beside those moments of tranquility and peace and almost kind of at ease is the same shepherd that says, I've not left you. Matter of fact, Jesus lets us know he's the great shepherd in John 10. In John 10, he said, others will leave when it gets tough. He said, they're, they're called hirelings, which means they're basically hired, just a hired gun to come and keep the sheep. He said, no, no, I'll lay my life down for you. And so the question becomes, though, he says, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they come for me. The, word, the rod and the staff, two separate instruments for the shepherd, rod a small club that would basically fend off the, the, the enemies but also if needed to be could nudge the sheep to get back in line if needed be and the staff would have the crook on it you've seen the old shepherd staff at every Christmas play known to man of the shepherd's crook right that's meant to, to, to guide that sheep along that path walking through that valley of death guiding it to the, to the places to go, and then if it needs to, taking that crook and grabbing it by the neck, pulling it back away to not go off the edge. Those bring comfort because it means the shepherd is involved. The shepherd is there actively with the sheep. So here's the question, though. When the dark night of the soul comes, 
Where do we find our comfort? Is it with other things, other people, other situations? Do we pour, pour ourselves into work? Do we pour ourselves into to life? Do we pour ourselves into our families, to other things that are out there? Could it be entertainment? It could some do for pornography, some do drinking. I was talking to, to a guy today and said, hey, you got a friend who, who has not been drinking in a long time but has found himself with the pressures just leaning into that for those of us that are like me that deal with food do I find my comfort in food more than I do in Jesus do I find my comfort in just kind of vegging out scrolling through social media to kind of veg out and not have to worry about things or do I just kind of isolate myself and say I'm going to find my comfort in isolating myself from others and insulating and if I don't have to see other people I don't have to think about it and so he says our comfort though is him but then what he does here's where it really gets real to me as he's taking us through that he says thou preparest thou again it's the Lord I love that word Lord you know you see that in, in your Bible that it's all capital letters Lord is Jehovah and throughout the Old Testament there's different uh, compound words there for the word Lord uh, Jehovah Jireh he will provide uh, Jehovah Salam he is our peace uh, Jehovah Nissi he is our rallying cry Jehovah Ra he is our shepherd it simply means he's the all sufficient one so get the picture he's walking us through that dark night of the soul the wrestling the question I'm listening to a, a podcast for the last, um, I guess, six or seven weeks um, called The Rise and Fall of Mars Hill Church. Um, as a young preacher, I was drawn to some of the things that they were doing out there, um, books that, that Mark Driscoll was writing. Um, at that time, church grew from 200 to about 10,000 in just a matter of years. It was just phenomenal. Um, and, and it's kind of he was just very strong in his preaching and I can remember listening to his sermons um, but in a matter of six months at one point several years ago it just they had satellite churches all over the uh, the north um, west out there and Seattle's where it was launched um, they had churches all over Seattle they had churches all over the, the west coast and within a moment it's it's gone Part of the context of this is that they've done a podcast from a gentleman who was a part of the movement during that time, not necessarily Mars Hill, um, but um, it was from the, the um, who wrote the book, I Kiss Dating Goodbye. I don't know if anybody's been familiar with that or not. And it basically was the context of purity movement, and he was just a huge kind of superstar as well. His name's escaping me right now. But he has since come out and said he's just walked away from his faith. A lot of things happened at his church, um, downfall of Christian leaders, the people he respected. So he came up with the, the not came up with this, but here's been the, the buzzword among that group of people now in their 30s who felt dejected by the hypocrisy of the church. They're deconstructing their faith. In other words, something that they had built upon are now walking away because they felt like there was no space for the questions, for the confusion, for the, the things they were seeing. And here's the reality. We're all human. <laughs> we're all fallible. We all make mistakes. We have to wrestle that out in our own heart. We have to wrestle out. And it comes back to that place of saying, sometimes I've got to wrestle out my own faith to see what do I believe I got to have those moments where in the doubts that I don't lean to other things because what's happened to some of these folks they've, when the doubts came because they didn't, they didn't feel like they were spaced they leaned to other things and then hence walking away the psalmist says no 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 lean into the shepherd when these moments come don't walk away from your faith wrestle it out if you need be but then lean into him even when you don't know. The thing that John teaches me is he brought his doubts to Jesus. And when you think about the table, 
the, the picture here is two pictures. One of the sheep to go into the tableland, okay, of the area in Judah. And the shepherd would go before the sheep and basically make sure that all the poisonous plants were clean. All the rocks, the thistles, and the shepherd would go into that tableland because the, sh the sheep, not to be mean, but they're just stupid. I mean, anything you read about sheep, it will tell you they are dumb. Okay, so a sheep can't tell the difference. It didn't sit there and go, hey, let me Google and take a picture. Is this plant poisonous? No. Looks good, smells good, going to eat it. I'm a dead sheep, right? All right. So the shepherd knows. So he goes ahead and prepares the table. It's also a picture of David preparing a banquet. In David's day, David knew about banquets. The choicest meats, the choicest foods, the choicest beverages, they would come together and they would just have a party. To celebrate. It's, it blows my mind at first. I'm, I'm struggling with the valley of the shadow of death. And you want to prepare a table? I definitely don't feel like celebrating. I definitely don't feel like hanging out. But the shepherd says, no, you need this table. Because a table speaks of fellowship and friendship. A table speaks of sharing a meal together. So here's what God just began to speak to my heart. For John, Jesus used scripture to speak into his doubts. Oftentimes, Jesus in the New Testament will talk about, come and sup with me. Speaking of supper. He tells Peter, come and dine with me. Speaking of a meal. And again, the shepherd is saying, what you need is you're coming out of this and you're trying to work your way through and you've leaned into me as your comfort come to the table come to the table I've prepared a place for us to eat and us to feed and for us as Christians that table is at church yes that table is worshiping together but every day that table is us taking God's word and spending time in prayer I can't tell you the fight that has been on in my own heart of the battle of making sure I'm coming to the table. The whispers that happen in your mind. Hey, is it really working? Seem pretty overwhelmed whether you're at the table or not. But then when I come to the table and I fight my way there, and I fight my way to that place to get beyond my flesh, get beyond my feelings and, and listen to the shepherd and I come and I sit at the table. By the way, that he has prepared... And by the way, if the shepherd knows what we can and can't eat, doesn't it make sense to know that what we're feeding our soul, if it's not the food from the shepherd, it's not good for us. And if all we're feeding our soul is things that are feeding the fear, well, hello. <laughs> I mean, really. I'm telling you, I'm, I, I'm a news junkie, always have been. But I have to fight myself to go, no, don't. I don't need to be there I'm sitting there wanting to watch the news at 7 o'clock in the morning and I'm going, hello, do I feel worse or better? Pretty sure I feel worse. So I want to stay informed, but not to the point of where it's feeding in the fear and the negativity. This is where the foods come. And then he says something that I mean, blows my mind. Think about this. In the presence of my enemies. Is it done hiding out? Going, All right, eat quick and, and eat, eat fast and eat quietly. Because the wolf's right over there. And just be real quiet. No, he's boastfully saying, I'm putting the feast right in front of every enemy that's coming against you. Because I'm here. And to get to you, they got to come to me. And I'm preparing the table to say to you, you can still feast when you're facing your enemies. You can still meet with me and enjoy the fruit of of being with me even when the enemy because the enemy is going to go away matter of fact it's going to get intensified <laughs> aren't you glad you're watching aren't you glad you're here it's going to get worse hello so we better find a place at the table because in the presence of every fear what are the enemies fear doubt worry anxiety anger frustration and there have been moments where I've had great anger about some decisions our leaders have made I mean there's just been welled up in me all these feelings and bringing them to the table to where I can feast 
And then thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runs over. In, 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 the, in the times that they lived in, there would be that moment at a meal where they would provide the refreshment of the oil and you would take it possibly and you know just kind of refresh you know it'd be like um, <laughs> essential oils now y'all are y'all with me <laughs> I'm not sure they had peppermint at that time you know whatever there is out there um, you know <laughs> I'm, still, I'm picturing that picture in my mind of a, of a man with a gunshot wound in his arm when it's okay my wife is an essential oil for that but anyway so it was but it was for, it's a refreshment sorry I just, it's just I went sidetracked for a second there but it's meant for refreshment but listen to what it says. No, no, no. This wasn't you doing it. It's him. And he's not dabbing. He's pouring. It's refreshment. It's also healing. And not only that, there's a cup there. And he's so pouring his oil of gladness that the cup's running over. How do we get from the valley to my cup running over? It's at the table. It's at the table. That in the midst of all that's happening, I can come to that place with the oil of gladness. And I'm not there yet. But boy, I'm, I'm fighting my way to get there. Because I can we just get real in this room and those watching? If you haven't had moments of being overwhelmed, God bless you lately. We all deal with it in different ways. I know that. And by the way, can we also give space to those that maybe do deal with with it differently? Amen? Instead of going, well, you just need to buck up. No, you need to give some grace. (laughs) You need to give some grace to say, hey, there's not a one of us aren't dealing with some semblance of fear and laying that before the Lord. Let's just give each other grace. Amen? And just say, hey, we're in this together but at the same time encourage one another to come to the table and let the the Lord and it's amazing to me because what what gripped my mind is this he is amazing is he not and he's sovereign and he's doing things I don't understand he's taking me through some things I don't understand just like he is you and everybody but he hasn't walked away and he may not give me the answers. <laughs> He'll always give me his presence. And he's always going to provide a table. And he's always going to provide the oil of the Holy Spirit and of gladness. And it's, it's a picture of, a, of the feast of the father for the prodigal son. Can you imagine? You walk through the valley of shadow of death, been eating with hogs, and you feel worn out and tired and dirty. I just want to, I just want to come to the Father's house just to be a servant. No, the Father sees us runs to us and then lavishly provides a meal and says my child who was gone has come home it's a picture of Jesus leaving the 99 going for that one because he pursues us here's the question I had all all weekend he prepares us or he prepares the table the oil's there he's leading us But we got to make the choice. He's not going to force us to sit down at the table. The invitation is there. <laughs> but I've got to make the choice to say, I'm going to choose to find my comfort. I'm going to choose to bring my questions to the one who's my shepherd. And I know that's a probably, it's really just from the overflow of my heart. But I pray some way, somehow, wherever you're at tonight, number one, if you've never been saved, the Lord Jesus Christ desires to be your shepherd. If you're watching tonight and you've never been saved, he desires to be your shepherd. Trust him tonight. For those of in this room, you're saved, and you're watching online, you're saved. Hey, we're all walking through something right now. Let's be reminded, the shepherd's guiding us through. He cares about us. And he's prepared to take in the presence of our enemies. <laughs> and he's saying, I've got, a, I've got a whole cruise of oil with your name on it. And I'll pour it out if you'll just come. And really, here's what 
came to my mind, if I'm willing to kneel, humble myself, and let him minister to me. Because he's wanting to. And I pray that God help us with that tonight. Would you pray with me? Father, tonight, I'm just grateful for the truth of your word. A simple way trying to explain the expressions of my heart tonight certainly don't have this thing figured out by far I don't have it figured out but I trust your word and in my doubts and in my worries and in my fatigue and in my frustrations I know you're working on me you're working in me you are for me not against me you are the good shepherd tonight and you will lead us through the valley of the shadow of death to where there is a table. And Father, help us to come to the table. If there's anyone watching that doesn't know you, Father, may they come to know you. Lord, tonight, speak to every person in this room and every person that's watching. Lord Jesus, anoint their heads with oil. Let their cup run over Again, it's not that you remove the enemies. It's in the presence of the enemies. It's in the presence of the doubt, the fear, the anger, even the numbness maybe. It's in the presence of all the things that would come against us as your sheep. And yet there is a place at the table and a cruise of oil for our head and a cup that can run over. And Father, let us find that place in you. And I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to spend some time just praying over the needs tonight. Because um, again, grateful that we can bring our petitions before our great shepherd. And, um, and so tonight, um, several from our prayer list, but um, are there any here in this room, any prayer needs to add to tonight? her name? Yeah, and Ryan. Okay, so that's Roy and Tammy's neighbors. Ryan and Tanya had a head-on collision. Remember them. So praying that they're, they're, they're home, just recovering. So, okay. All right. Thank you, Ms. Tammy. Let's remember that. Sheila, you had somebody? That's right. I've got them on here. Um, Johnny's got to have a test on Friday. Then Elge is going to be having some surgery on Friday, so remember him. Talk to him today, and just to be able to get some relief, some of the things he's been dealing with for some time. So, um, others tonight. That's right, folks at the campground there, at Unicorn Springs, dealing with COVID right now. I know some are getting better, but some are still dealing with that. Yeah. So. Okay, Ryan Bolt. Yeah, Ryan. Yeah. Let's remember Ryan tonight. Thank you, Josh. Amen. We'll remember that. Crystal, do you have one? Okay, I thought you, anybody came. Dawson. If you're watching online, go ahead and add them. I, I may not get to them in this service, but I will add them to our. And we had several that um, had, had mentioned. I'm just going to mention a couple. Um, 
keep remembering, as I said, Caitlin, the funeral was today. And here's the thing that for these folks that have, that have had loved ones pass away, let's keep praying. You know, I know we've been praying for Caitlin. We, we'll just keep lifting her up before the Lord. Uh, David, uh, the passing of his sister Glenda, um, the funeral was today as well. Talked to Dalphia yesterday. She's actually making her way home now. So remember her. And I said, Michelle, um, to right now they're not doing a service for her husband. It's going to be at a later date. Um, but just remember the whole family. And then um, her son Camden, his dad, passed away the same day uh, there in Florida. So um, the family's just, just heartbroken. Um, a lot of our folks that were in the hospital, and, and I want to just say this to everybody who's watching online for y'all too, um, unless the families that have had COVID or any sickness, because there's been times people have had cancer and said, Pastor, Give us some time. I, I don't want. I'm not ready to share with everybody yet. So I, I have to. Not I have to. I, I want to, and I will always honor that. So there have been families that have just simply asked when they've had COVID to kind of, you know, not share. So if there's frustration comes from that, I know I get it. But I want to honor these families. But I will say, um, for the ones that have allowed us to share, um, I know Miss Vivian is still in the hospital, but having a better day today uh, from what she shared with me that her oxygen level is coming down or from the leaders um, others that were in the hospital are home and um, and so very grateful for that and folks are starting to get better um, a lot of the folks that had been sick have completely recovered and some are just slower because it, particularly if he ended up having uh, pneumonia with it and um, so just grateful for that to see and uh, got a chance to take some, um, like I said, some lunches by today. And uh, Brother Doug was just grateful just to see somebody. And um, so had had a great time. And I know he's not watching to, to brag on him, but when I called him, he was out of breath. I said, you okay? He said, yeah, I'm doing my exercises. Oh, okay, my bad. And, and then when I left, he's walking the driveway to get the mail. If y'all don't know, that's a mile there and like a mile back. I'm like, I feel really like, you know, a slug when I leave Brother Doug's house. So, yeah, it's his time. It's his time. Yeah, it's his time. So, keep keep praying for you. <laughs> yeah. So remember him. Um, John and Connie, keep praying for them. He's doing so much better. He is. Um, they're having to do the intravenous IVs at home, and uh, but he, he's doing so much better. Um, keep praying, as, a, as, as Sheila mentioned about Johnny and Elgin. Also, um, Barbara Cantrell, Brian still doing dialysis, so keep praying for him. Um, as um, was mentioned, too, there was a couple... Bo Riles was mentioned from some of our folks online. Miss Judy Thomas, it's her grandson-in-law. He's going to the mission field there in the Middle East. Um, so remember him. Tabitha McJunkin is a teacher Courtney um, works with, and she's walking through cancer. Um, Brian Lee is in the hospital uh, with COVID. Some of the folks in the community know him. Um, and others um, to mention, I know Miss Janie mentioned Emma Hall. Um, she had been in a car wreck. Um, also, David Glass Jr. had been asked to put on the prayer list as well. Um, and uh, Brother Jerry Dover, who watches, had asked us to remember some folks in their family. Um, his, um, some of his family with uh, Margaret Hawkins had COVID. Um, also, some family members there that just walking through family stuff. I uh, want to remember them in our prayers. Uh, Miss um, Linda Parker family, Linda uh, passed away. Um, she, hers was with cancer there in the community where I grew up. Um, um, her husband did all the did painting, um, and um, and then his brother does all our mechanic work. So my dad had told me about that as well. So I remember, and I think her mom lives. Was she really okay? I got you. And her, her mom, I think, lives over here. Loretta had told me, lives right over the road here. So um, keep remembering them and just many others on our prayer list. Josh and, and the crew that he's with, they're in Louisiana. 
Okay. Okay. So remember Josh. And, okay. A lot of those that that work with the different electrical companies and that kind of stuff. Remember them as well. So. Anybody else tonight? Well, let's go before the Lord and I want to mention several of these. And again, if you've got one, just please share with us. Um, if you're watching online and, and love to, to pray. So just join me as we pray, lifting up these names before the Lord tonight. Father God, we come to you tonight and uh, we want to just specially pray for the many needs that have been shared tonight. We know specifically we want to pray for Caitlin. Um, Father, words escape us when we think about um, Dalton's passing and Miss Caitlin having the funeral today. We ask you, Father, please touch her. God, not only today, but in the days to come, wrap your loving arms around her and strengthen her and comfort her. I lift up to you, Brother David, and his family as they had the funeral for his sister today. God, comfort him, comfort his brother-in-law. Uh, met the daughter as well there yesterday. Pray for them. God, comfort them. Praying for Michelle and, and her family, Father, at the passing of her husband. Lord, we lift up Michelle to you, and we pray for grace upon grace for her and the kids and 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 for uh, Cam's dad there in Florida as well. We pray for that family. We pray for Dalphia. Continue to comfort her and strengthen her. We pray tonight, as Miss Tammy mentioned about their neighbors, we pray for them and we pray for healing for them. Um, these that have been mentioned, that other family members that have had loved ones that have passed away, uh, the Parker family, God, be with them. Others that have been mentioned with still dealing with COVID and sickness, God, in the name of Jesus, I pray bring healing to every person. And Lord, I pray that you would just bring healing to every person walking through this. I pray for Miss Vivian tonight that you would touch her and bring healing to her, Father, that she would continue to get stronger there in the hospital. I'm so grateful for those that are now home. And, and talking with some of them today and, and just seeing the grace that you've shown, I give you praise and I give you glory, Father. Thank you, God, for just even seeing John today, McCarter, and we're grateful to, to see him doing better. And we pray for you, Miss Connie. Lord, we lift up, God, others, God. We pray that we know there are others in our church, God, that, that are having some procedures and tests. And we pray, God, for Brother Johnny. We pray for Elgin. I know Miss, Miss Carol, um, she's going to be having a test. And also Brother Jack, Lord, with his eyes. And, and others, God, that I know that will be having some procedures. We pray for them. And we pray for your grace to be upon them, Father, as they walk through that, God, this week. And we pray. We pray for the guys at the Victory Home. As we know, we would normally be a time that we would go and be there and fellowship and encourage but, Lord, we're still able to send a meal and, and send some desserts, and we're grateful for that. And bless the leadership there, Casey, and, and all those, God, that serve there. Bless those men, I pray. Father, we, we lift up all these on our prayer list. There's so many that, God, you know the need. We know, as Josh mentioned, Ryan and others that are walking through that type of time in their life where they're struggling and God needs your grace we pray for him and others that we know that's on our heart tonight these that brother Jerry Dover that watches online faithfully shared we pray for these needs God we, we pray uh, for these that we know Renee ask us to pray for God we, we lift up these that's on our heart God you know each and every need we pray for these that have lost loved ones that are some of the kids and, and, Lord, they're walking through that, God. We pray for your hand upon each and every need, Lord, of these children and what they're walking through. And, God, we just pray for grace upon grace upon grace. And then we just pray for everyone that's watching online and everyone in this room. They've got their own 
valleys they're walking through, their own fears and insecurities, maybe frustrations, maybe just weary of this whole journey. Encourage tonight. Strengthen tonight. Lord, show yourself strong tonight in a way that only you can. Lord, I thank you for this church. I thank you for the people of Center Baptist Church. And I just ask you, Father, to encourage and strengthen and minister. Lord God, I pray that you would continue to guide us in the days ahead and help us to lean into you. Lord, thank you for, uh, again, for every person here and every person watching online. And again, we want to pray as we think about those in our heart that are lost. I've thought about that a lot this week. Eternity is so real. And Lord God, people right now that are living that if they were to die without you, we know that in hell they'll lift up their eyes. May you also keep that in the forefront of our mind to be obedient, to share, to invite, to point people to you. May you help us to find ways to minister May you help us to find ways to encourage and to bless others. May you help us to find ways to make much of you. And Lord, I thank you. We ask it in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I say this often, but it's true. If there was somebody left off, um, it's a matter of the mind, not the heart. Um, You have to remember that I'm the same guy that Last week when I was trying to get ahead and make some breakfast one night for the week for the family and could not figure out, Miss Amanda, how come the pan was not getting hot to fry some eggs. It helps when you turn the eye on. So um, that's what we're dealing with in my mind. So if something gets left off, it's a matter of the mind, not the heart. But I want to say again, thank you to each one of y'all for being here tonight. I mean that. God bless you. And for those watching online, thank you. Um, I appreciate you more than you know and let us know that you're there and you're watching if you've got a need as well I I appreciate Miss Sheila always being faithful to help us and be a part and serving and Michael and they're back there with the the youth that are here Um, and just every person thank you Miss Brooke back there being the encourager keep her mama straight and uh, we're grateful for every one of you I mean that hope you have a good night I've said this a lot lately, but I'm going to keep saying it. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you. And may the Lord show you favor. And may the Lord bless you real good. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Whatever that was. <laughs>